Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of our series. In part one, you can watch it right here if you missed it, we learned to create the mask and textured it. In this part, we're gonna be focusing on the animation for the mask and also the environment around it. Like the church, uh, the statue, the lights, the camera, everything. For that, we're gonna be using Blender version 2.91. Let's open it up and start right now. I already opened the mask we created last time. First off, we're gonna be animating the mask. This isn't hard at all. We just go under Object Data Properties, scroll down to Start and End Mapping, and then play around with the end value. If you put it to zero, the line will completely disappear, and if it's on one, it's fully there. So what we need to do is just decrease it to zero, add a keyframe, scroll forward to 100 frames, and then just increase it again to one, like that, and then add the keyframe. Okay, if we go back and play the animation, you see this is basically all we need to do. You can basically repeat this step now for all of the paths. Choose the next one, scroll down to start and end mapping, decrease it to zero, set the keyframe at the start, go forward some time and increase it to one. Set another keyframe and that's it. Okay, now that we got it, you can play the animation and see they all grow very nicely. What you can also do if you want to is choose all of them and then displace the timing a little bit so they don't all grow at the same time. Maybe something like that. And if we play it again right now, you can see they have a different speed in which they all grow. I think this looks quite nice. Maybe the last one is a bit, little bit too late. We're just gonna drag him uh, a little bit to the front again. So if we play it now. Yes, I think this looks quite nice and I'm happy with it. Okay, now we can start building the environment around it. For that I went online and searched for some models that I liked. I found a statue and a church interior that I liked very much. I'm just gonna import the models that I found. Okay, you see my model is turned upside down. So I will rotate it 180 degrees and position it. Now we're gonna fit our mask to the statue. We're just gonna choose all of our paths and position them right on the face. Okay, I think this looks fine. Maybe you need to tweak the form of your mask a little bit to fit your face better. For that, just choose a path, go into edit mode and align the vertices again to your liking. But I guess I'm quite happy with how it looks right now. The only thing I will change is make it a little bit thicker. For that, I'm just gonna go search my circle, choose it and scale it up a little bit. Okay, I think something like that looks good. Now you can see our animation is still saved and we have everything how we want it. Okay, now that we positioned the mask, we're just gonna import the environment around it. I found a nice model of a church. I will leave you the link down below in the description. Okay, we can see this is also the wrong way around. So we're just gonna rotate it. I'm gonna position my statue right in the middle of the church. The next thing we're gonna do is create the materials for our church and the statue. The church already came with materials, so we just need to connect them. For that I'm gonna open a shader editor and then with the church selected I can go here in the material properties and then I will see all of my materials here. If yours aren't connected like mine, you will need to choose the material then go in here, add an image texture, if there isn't one already. Press open here and then go over here and search for the name. This is the Tower Top 06. So we're just gonna search for that. This one, Tower Top 06, open image and connect it to the base color. Like that you can connect all of your materials again. And if you then go into the material preview, 
You can see all of our materials are here. For the material of our statue, I will use a Blender add-on. The add-on is called Blender Kit. You just go under Edit, Preferences, under Add-ons, you can search for Blender Kit. Just activate this add-on and you will get this menu on top of here. Press on the eye icon, which opens the menu preview. Blender Kit gives you a lot of really good and high quality materials right away. So just search for something that you like and then change into the rendered view. Right now I don't see anything, so I'm just gonna add some lights to see what's going on. <sighs> okay, Blender just crashed. I had to redo everything. So here's a little bit of advice for you. This scene has a lot of geometry, a lot. So what we need to do to keep Blender from crashing and also to save you some headaches and me for the future is to reduce the triangle count. Okay, first we need to identify what we don't need. Um, our church here is quite big actually and has a lot of things we don't even see. I already know I'm just gonna fo be focusing on the front part of the church right here, which means all of these things right here in the back we don't really need. We're just gonna go into edit mode, activate x-ray, go into the side view and just delete everything that's back here because we don't need it. So, and you already see, this reduced our final count by a lot. So we're gonna go into the top view and also delete the shit that we don't need on the sides. Okay, I think this is fine. We deleted quite a lot of the geometry and our scene is a lot lighter now. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is create a camera and focus on the composition. I'm just gonna add the camera. Yeah, what I want to do is go, have the camera go through the corridor of the church and right up to our statue. I'm just going to move everything around so it fits a little bit better together. Okay, if you want the camera to always focus on one object, um, what you can do is add a constraint. Click here and then track to. Then we're just going to press Shift A to add an empty and position it where we want the camera to look. I want it to look right on the head to the mask. Then go back to the camera, choose the empty which is created. And if we go back into the camera view, our view will always be aligned to the mask. Even if we change the position of our camera like that, you see it always focuses on the mask. This comes in very handy if you want to animate the cameras or orient things uh, to certain points. Now we need to animate the camera. I'm just gonna go to the beginning of our animation, set a keyframe by pressing I and location. And then I'm just gonna go maybe to 300 and move the camera to where I like it. Maybe something like that, then press I again and press available. If I go back and play the animation, you can see it looks already quite nice. What I want to change right now is the way it stops. I think it stops a little bit too fast. So I'm just going to change my uh, workspace here and go into the graph editor. And for that, I'm just gonna choose this keyframe here and drag it out a lot. So it will stop way smoother. If I go back now, you see it slows down way, way sooner and goes in very, very slowly. Yes, this looks great. Maybe I will even offset the keyframe a little bit and pull on this some more. What we need to do of course now is to offset the animation of our mask. For that I'm just gonna go back into the timeline view, select all of my paths, press A to select all of the keyframes and then move them back a lot. I want the mask to only begin growing uh, when we're right at the face. 
something like that yeah i think this already looks quite nice i'm just gonna do some minor adjustments to the positioning of my uh, empty and also my camera all around i'm quite happy with the animation the next thing i need to do is work on the lighting for that i'm just gonna open a new window and change the left one to the rendered view so i can always see how it looks right now our lighting is quite boring and dull i would like to have a little bit more of a dramatic lighting and also add some touches of color to give a little bit more of an aggressive mood i'm just going to choose the light we created earlier and position it a little bit more above the head and make it smaller a big light will be very soft and a very small light will cast very harsh shadows you can see it if we decrease it our shadows are very hard i think that's a little bit too hard so i'm gonna go with something in between and i'm gonna move the light a little bit back and then i'm just gonna duplicate it with shift d move it to the side and change the color to red just do whatever feels right to you there's no right or wrong it just comes down to personal preference okay i would like the light to be not too prominent that's why i'm gonna put it to the side a little bit what i think right now is that uh, my top light has a little bit too much spill all around i would like it to be more focused i will just change it out with a spotlight choose spot then I'm gonna move it directly above my statue and increase the intensity. What this allows me to do is focus the light only on this place right here, you see? Um, before it was very wide and spread out, but I would like it to be very focused on the statue alone. I think I'm quite happy with how it looks overall. The only thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of ambient light. For that I'm gonna create another area light Move it up right underneath this roof of the church. Increase the scale some more. Okay, like that you can see it illuminates the floor a little bit. That's exactly what I want, that it's not completely black and you can see a little bit what's going on. Okay, let's go about the render settings. I'm gonna use cycles and GPU rendering. I'm also gonna be using optics denoiser and adaptive sampling. For my final render, I will need to try out different things. Maybe 250 frames are enough for the moment. You can clamp the indirect light and also decrease those numbers here. For example, zero looks a little bit shit, so I just increase it again. You need to find out what works for you. Um, choose the resolution you want. I'm just gonna go with 180 by 180. Okay, now that we got our settings, we're gonna go into compositing. Render out an image. Right now you can also see how your render looks. Maybe you will need to increase the sample some more or the resolution or something else. Just try whatever fits your needs. Now we're gonna go into the compositing workspace. Press here to use notes and then press Shift A and add a viewer node and just connect the image to the image and we can see what's going on. What I always like to do is add a glare node. Always remember to connect it to the composite node. We're gonna go with fog low, increase the size and the quality to high. I'm gonna lower the threshold a little bit. I'm also gonna add a lens distortion node. This also helps it making it a little bit more realistic because Every lens has a little bit of imperfections. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of dispersion and a little bit of distortion. And don't forget to press fit. I'm just gonna add one more thing. That's depth of field. Just gonna activate it in the camera. And as the focus object, I can also choose the empty we created before. Like that, we get a little bit of uh, blurriness in the background. I quite like that look. Only thing left to do is render it out and see how it looks. Okay guys, I think that's it. I'm happy with how it turned out. I hope you learned something and that you had fun. See you next time.